Okay, it's going live. Preparing. Okay, we're streaming and good morning, everybody. And good morning, James. It's so Keep great to live. see you. Um, hey, Betty, how are you? Right now. Hey, James, how are you? So everybody, good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Betty and it is Saturday, November 24th, and we're live with uh, a dear friend and an amazing leader, an author, a, um, a Guinness World Book of Records uh, uh, winner, or I guess you beat a, a, a book of records and um, you beat a record, and we're going to talk about your life. I want to talk about, um, there's so much to you, James. Um, uh, okay. you, I met you uh, at an event in Los Angeles, and we'll talk about how we met. I want to talk about the whole journey, uh, mm -hmm. but just want to give some highlights of your career. So you have been a tennis champion in Ireland, and I know you don't like to talk about these things because you're so <laughs> modest, yeah. uh, but you've been a tennis champion in Ireland. And, uh, and then I, uh, um, and then you've, with doubles, right? And you played mm -hmm. doubles. And um, also, uh, we met in Los Angeles, and uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. You're uh, an author of an amazing book on leadership, and mm -hmm. a recent author, because your book just came out. Yeah. Uh, is it, is it uh, available on Amazon it's, now? It's available on Amazon, and it's also available on my website as well, which is hccollective.co. Um, the book is called Advantage, uh, Lessons from Sport and Business to Achieve Your Goals. So I'm delighted to, uh, to, to join you on here. Yes. So, uh, James, uh, let's talk about your childhood. What was your childhood like? Let's start at the very beginning. I want to I take the audience through, uh, and, and everybody, we're just having a conversation. So mm. this is more of uh, talking to a good friend and yeah. an amazing leader who is now doing a lot of coaching and teaching people how mm. sport and leadership mm. actually come together mm -hmm. and uh, how you've been able to do some things. But but let's talk about your childhood really quickly. Yeah, so, so I grew up in, in, in Dublin um, in Ireland, started tennis when I was probably six years old and uh, my mom is a nurse retired now my dad's a farmer retired they my dad would not be into tennis at all my mom was kind of into it and brought me down to the tennis club I had an older brother and sister that played um, and I was a really actually a really shy kid um, used to uh, I think I used to cry before every time I had to go and play like initially <laughs> um, but then it was like one of those kids that when I played, I loved it. And then, but I was just kind of shy around other kids for some, for some reason. Um, but tennis was really my escape. I obviously really liked playing. And then, it, you know, I did that coaching thing and then that led to, you know, provincial squads and getting more serious into it. Um, and then I was, you know, in Ireland, I was probably number one or two or and probably number two in Ireland under 10 number two or three under under 12 and just I, I kind of got into the squads and it became more and more serious and then really what happened was um I mean there's there's a couple of lucky things I guess as well you know uh, you know Ireland facility wise tennis wise we wouldn't have amazing facilities but an indoor center opened um close to where I was going to school to, to high school um, which was a big kind of shift because I was able to play indoors in the winter um, which was which was great and a coach came from Canada, um, a coach by the name of Larry Jurovich, who was a great mentor and teacher and coach and person generally. Um, and I think, you know, we'll probably talk about it later, but it's amazing what what's influence an individual can have on, on someone, whether it's in, you know, having a having a, a positive word with a kid or, or a person in work or whatever it is, you know, you can have such an impact on someone. And um, so I was very lucky that 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 like, timing wise that, that I had this great kind of coach um, and I worked really hard. I played, you know, six days a week, twice a day before and after school and so on, and just got really into the sport. Um, and then, you know, one, I suppose, life changing thing that happened uh, when I was 
I was 15, my brother was 17. Uh, he had a spinal injury accident um, and he's, he's paralyzed from the neck down. And he's amazing. He's doing, you know, he's got his own business now. And he's brilliant. But I think that actually, in hindsight, that had such a huge impact on, on my life, you know, in terms of, sorry, you were going to ask me something there. Yeah, um, I was wondering, how old were you and how old was your brother? I, wanna, I, want, I want everybody to kind of put themselves to exactly where you were. I, I was 15. He was 17. So he, he um, it was kind of a freak accident. He fell off a hay bale on a farm. And now I wasn't there at the time, but, you know, I was, it was almost when I think back in hindsight now, it's like, I feel like I went from being, you know, the youngest, probably most, you know, the most spoiled and, and James needs to go to his tennis and, you know, maybe the family, not revolved around me, but because I'm an older, obviously Stephen and my older sister, Amy, but um, like, it was obviously just a traumatic time and that, you know, my parents were dealing with this, with this catastrophic um, accident. And, and for me, then, I guess my coping mechanism was really to throw myself into tennis. And, you know, I think that was my, you know, they kind of left me to my own devices where I went off and played. And I was very lucky that like, and I think, I've, you know, I've spoken about it before, but like the support network of, even, you know, that coach I spoke about, Larry, or other parents of kids that used to maybe drive me to to tennis and stuff like that. So, but I think that had a huge impact on my philosophy for life and 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 where that's kind of taken me from there, you know? Um, yeah, that's a big one because at that age, um, especially, I mean, I started chuckling because you were the spoiled kid and yeah. the youngest all of that and you're getting all of this mm. attention with tennis and everything else and then all of a sudden and and I just want to stop for a moment because right now with COVID um, so mm. many things are happening in families and and so many of the kids are used to having all the attention and then all of a sudden something happens to someone and the attention is drawn to someone else mm. uh, and and it seems to me like um, you have such a good relationship with your brother mm. you always have and mm. ever since we met we started talking about um, you know, you're in somebody saying on, on YouTube, your discipline is outstanding, very admirable. Um, mm, thank you. So, so what is it? What does it take? Because you started playing tennis at a very young age, right? Mm, and so, yeah, so it's like, yeah. Mm. so when uh, your brother gets injured, mm. uh, I would imagine there's only two years apart my brother and I are two years apart and my two daughters are 22 months apart. So I mm. have also experience with that. I, I don't know what I would have done if my brother would have gotten injured and I was really focused on the sport. Would I have, mm. would that have deterred me from going there? What cost you to just stay focused and mm. still be able to be empathetic and be there with the family? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a really good question. I think it was almost an escapism in some ways, you know, it was kind of like, I, I had this conversation with someone just because it even a couple of weeks ago, because you, you mentioned COVID there and one of the challenges, so Ireland has moved into, we have our kind of tier of restrictions and we moved into level five, which means that Indeed. everyone is, everyone is um, shut down, yeah. pretty much shut down. Right. So, so tennis is shut down as well. And for me, I was trying to describe to someone that, I play tennis as a mental health thing. You know, I like, it's almost when I'm on court that I, I can kind of think about my day, but it's like, it's like the equivalent of someone going for a run. Right. So like, you know, I feel like that it's my kind of drug of choice in some ways. So okay. I feel like when, when he had his accident, I was, you know, I was already a good tennis player, but I was almost, it gave me the ability to, I think it, a little bit in an escape. One would probably be an escapism piece that I was kind of in my world there that I could yeah. that I could escape. And you maybe could control moment. that world. You could yeah, I, yeah. That world. And then the second thing I think is is look, I think life is short as we're all realizing, and we don't know what's around the corner, and we don't know what's 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 coming. And I, I kind of think you know you've won life, and you may as well do something you love doing, and, and if you're passionate about it, and you can and you and you enjoy it, then why not? And I was, I love tennis. I never saw it as like when, when, when that person commented and said that the commitment is admirable or, you know, I never saw it as being like a job. Like I wasn't kind of 
you know, obviously we have good days and bad, but it was always, I guess the, the fun was always there. It was never a chore, you know? So, so, um, but it definitely in hindsight, I mean, it definitely had a, a, a huge impact on me. Like, um, and I think, look, I think we all have our stories. Like, I don't want to kind of claim that I'm like, I have some, you know, I don't know. I think everyone, everyone has their story. And I think we're all, you know, we're, where we all are at the moment, we're all going through our challenges with what's going on globally. So um, we're all just trying to do our best, you know? Yeah. And that's really absolutely. what I was trying to do. Yeah, no, I, I understand. And then uh, the idea of going into something that you have control over that you can kind of lose yourself in. When my brother mm. was, was passing away, I had, uh, I played the piano a lot. Mm. And I read a lot and I wrote a lot and I meditated a lot. And mm -hmm. so it was kind of like my out, I would mm -hmm. run in the morning. So that's mm -hmm. another thing, you know, so something physical is always, mm -hmm. is always good because then you get your energy out. So, so uh, Jerry wants to know about your very best games. So, so he's like, okay, cut through all of that. Let's just get <laughs> you playing. We want to hear about the good, the bad, and the ugly about playing. And remember the conversation is around leadership and sports and so mm -hmm. how how is it that that you you've had very best games and you've also you know there's ups and downs in sports oh, yeah. like Jeez. there's ups and downs in life so tell us about your very best game and what did you learn from that and then tell us about the one game that you wish that you would have done something different and what did you learn from that Ooh, very very best game so for me Davis Cup is something that's very was very important to me. So um, for those kind of non tennis people, that's where you represent your country. And um, so I would have played Davis Cup for close to ten years for Ireland. Um, when I was a kid, I went to watch the Davis Cup and I got the autographs of the players. And then obviously a couple of years later, I was my first cap at nineteen. So um, so some of my best memories in tennis are from Davis Cup, I would say, and playing on the team and and. You know, it's very hard to describe to people, but I'd be a very proud, I'd be a very proud Irish person. And I think when you, when you line up for your country and you hear the national anthem and you're, you're obviously selected in your country to represent, um, I think it's something that's, it's, it's, uh, it gives you goosebumps, you know, that, 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 um, to, to do that. So I have some great memories, you know, playing in front of my family. Um, we, we played a match against Egypt, where uh, myself and my partner in doubles won big match, you know, really good preparation. What did I learn from it? What did I learn from it? Ah, like I, I think, I think the beauty of sport is is being in that heat of the moment, mm -hmm. you know, and in that battle. And I think that battle. I think what tennis kind of teaches you is the ability to make decisions under pressure and the ability to change things when things are wrong and to pivot, if we want to use a business term, that if I'm playing a match and we're losing and we sit down at the changeover and we say, look, we need to change what we're doing now because it's not going well. The other, the opponents are playing well. Right. And I think the same thing happens in business where things happen. You have to pivot, you have to change and you have to be strong to make those decisions. Um, and if you, what's the, the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results so yeah. i think that's so those kind of if you ask me it's probably not one match but i love the kind of memories of the if the heat of a battle right and those kind of memories would be probably playing for ireland in the davis cup um, and then low points um you know uh, there's been plenty of them as well uh, like I lost, a, you know, I've lost matches where we, I've had match points. I remember losing a match in China, which was a very big match um, and lost the match, was very disappointed, went to my room, didn't, didn't order room service and didn't leave the room for a day and a half, like, oh, which, wow. which, which was not good, like, and in hindsight, it's not something I would encourage or anything, but um, just you, you can it's tough to, I mean, we all, we all lose deals, right. Or we, we have down days. So like, I'm, I, again, it's, it happens to all of us. And, um, but I think one lesson I got from tennis was, was you can never get too high or too low. And mm -hmm. I think that's the same in business, right. Is like, there's going to be good days, but you don't ever get too high. And then when the bad days come, you don't want to be too low. You want to try and have those little, little highs, little lows, but kind of keep an even keel. Um, and yeah. 
So I think tennis, I think sport in general is a great teacher of, of that kind of discipline. Um, so, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to go to, to LSU, to Louisiana, to, to play tennis over there. And I went as, you know, an 18 year old kid who'd barely been to America before into the South to, to train in, you know, insane temperatures and, and humidity and so on. And I think, you know, did I learn, did I learn a lot in the classroom? Yeah, I learned a little bit, but like, I also learned a lot from, you know, managing my time and training at five in the morning and all those types of things that really kind of gives you that discipline and that, that hard work, you know, so. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, the discipline piece comes through when I think of you, James, and James, you, we've known each other for how long now? I was actually just when you were thinking of saying at the start, I'm pretty sure 2016 we met at that event. Is it? Okay, so it's so, been yeah. four years. I, I feel like I've known you forever. You're 2016, we've yeah. gone through quite a bit together. And mm -hmm. um, when I think of James Kluski, I think um, so the adjectives that I would bring up um, when I think of you, James, and I know that I'm not alone because there are a lot of mutual friends. Uh, that think of you the same way. You are kind, you are humble, you are competent, you are disciplined, you are reliable, you are a real friend. What I mean by a real friend is, is you say it like it is, you don't sugarcoat it, you just, you kind of just say, okay, this is going to work, this is not going to work, and what about this, and what about that? We've talked about doing business together um, throughout the years, we've talked about doing some things, and we did do some things, and, mm. and I do have a little surprise for you, because I am going to bring you back to uh, yeah. America. Oh, and, uh, yeah. yeah, so everybody, I'm bringing James back to America, and we're going to be doing some things together. So we'll talk about that. Um, uh, I'm going to leave everybody here in suspense, but I'll tell you right after because I know this is a big surprise for you. Oh, <laughs> so, I, I, I just to say I've been in, I've been in uh, isolation for two weeks where I was a close contact of a. Uh, so I, I haven't really seen anyone or anything. So that's I know, I know. So, so James is, I know, I forgot I to tell you. I got a negative result just for the, just, I did the COVID test, but um, yes. yeah, it's been yes. a tough, tough, tough time, like. Yeah, it has been. Um, but, but so, so one of the things that I want to dig down a little bit deep before we go into your book, because I want to go deep into your book in mm. just a little bit, but before we go there, James, uh, I want you to tell the audience, because you guys um, get a blank sheet of paper if you don't have one and get a pen because you're gonna get a lot of nuggets from this. And if you don't have one handy, make sure that you you watch this later when you do. Uh, James, you broke a world record, a Guinness mm. Book of World Record, and you mm. set out to do that. And that was not an easy thing for you to do. Walk us through your decision to break the record your selection process, how did you select the people? And then walk us through that journey because that was an amazing journey, James. Yeah, so so I finished playing professionally in, in um, the end of 2015. So it started when I started 2016 and I wanted to, I wanted to do something. I wanted to kind of train for something. And I, I thought about, you know, I have a friend who's an Olympian and I said to her like, oh, I might, um, thinking about running a marathon and she was like well have you ran any 5ks yet you know like I kind of just wanted to do something big you know and she was like <laughs> maybe you should try and do a 5k first so I just had this idea like uh, I, I really want to do something of, of like interesting and something that scares me and excites me and then I had seen when I was playing professionally a couple of Irish guys had attempted to break this Guinness world record for charity and the record was for the longest tennis doubles match um, and the record was was 57 hours um, and we basically so they did 33 hours sorry they did 33 hours one of the guys got cramp and they had to stop and it was kind of in the back of my mind and then I just I just thought why not like I, I'd love to do it um, and then I suppose it's like, you know, you, you have to obviously recruit people to, to do it with. And so a friend of mine who was on the Irish Davis Cup team, the generation before me, I approached him initially. He's a really fit guy, really. 
I'd have great conversations with him. And I'd say, I said to him, hey, this might be a little bit, you know, if you've no interest, it's fine. It might be a bit crazy, but is this world record like I'd really like to do it, you know? Would you be interested? And he said, yeah, let's, let's do it. So we had, so I had two people then. And then I said, well, we need to recruit two more. Um, and I said to him, I know this, I know this kid from, from Malahide. He's, he's, um, he's in college. He's 22. Really nice kid. I can have... I can have a big influence on him, you know, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta talk him into it. Like, uh, so I called uh, Dan O'Neill and I said, Dan, what do you think? Would you be interested in this? And he, he was like, ah, and I said, come on, it'd be great. You know, we'll, we'll do it together. It'd be brilliant. And he said, okay, yeah, that's, so I'm in. Um, and then Dave uh, recruited Luke, who was the fourth, fourth player. Um, and then I, I said to, to Dave, I said, well, we have to do it we have to do it for charity um, and let's, you know, raise money for a good cause. So there's a charity in Ireland called Enjoy Tennis, which, which creates tennis programs for, for people with special needs, people with disabilities. Uh, they do programs like blind tennis. So it's a really, it's a really amazing charity. Um, and I approached them and I said, look, would you be interested in partnering with us on this, on this? Um, and then the, the arrangement was that they kind of took care of all the logistics in terms of Guinness requirements and clocks and so on and, and volunteers and things like that. So we did a dinner, we raised, raised some money for them um, and we trained hard in the, in the lead up. Um, and it was, it, was, it, was, it was really exciting and really scary because we didn't know what we were stepping into. Um, and it was one of those ones that uh, I'm trying to relate this to business in, in, somewhere, in some ways in that you know, as a tennis player, I know that when I went to play Davis Cup for Ireland, I know how long the match potentially would be, you know, so I knew what I was training for, I knew what I was getting into, whereas this record attempt, it was very hard to kind of play for, you know, we didn't know how we were really going to feel after 50 hours, right, because, you know, so we did some, in the weeks leading up, we were training physically, we were doing a lot of, um, a lot of breathing work, so a lot of kind of exercise with with breath work, which was which was helpful, um, and then we also uh, we also did some kind of trial runs where we did twelve hours straight one night, and we did I think we did I think twelve hours was the most we did in a row a couple of weeks before just to kind of see how it was on the court and stuff, but then we we stepped into it and we didn't really know where we were going to get, um, and it was such a it was such a incredible. I don't know what the word is, the, the kind of ups and downs through it, where you have people on the side of the court that were supporting you and encouraging you. And then you had the players actually on the court. And when one person was down, the three other people kind of raised them up, you know, and I think everyone had their ups and downs through it. Um, and in the lead up to it, about, about six weeks before it, there's a friend of mine, he's an ultra, ultra marathon runner. And he came to kind of give us a, a little bit of a pep talk. And he said to us, you know, the sun, the sun will come up on Sunday. So we started on the, on the Thursday and he said, the sun, did we start? Yeah. He said, the sun will come up on the Sunday. And it's just a question whether you guys will be standing on the court. And I remember that kind of stayed with me like that. I just didn't want to give up, you know, and I didn't want the other guys to, to give up. So we were, so the, the lowest point was the Saturday night. We, we, during the night, like it was just, oh, it was horrible, like horrible. James, let me, let me stop you for just one second, because I want everybody to really understand the magnitude of what you took on. Mm. So you had to play for a minimum of how many hours to beat the record? So 57 was the record, yeah. So, so if you, if you played for 57 and a half hours, you would beat the record. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, so listen up everybody. And then how many breaks did you take? Did you get to take? Yeah. So, so the rules were you had a five minute break per hour. Okay. And you could, you could accumulate the time. So what we would do would we, we would play for four hours straight and we would take five minutes and then we would bank 15. So what we would do then is, so the first night we had 
an hour of sleep and the second night we had an hour of sleep um, and then other than that we just played right through so so um and and so what i was saying to someone was the first night none of us slept so we went for the hour but we couldn't sleep because the adrenaline i guess yeah of course the second, the second night we had an hour and we all were like out to the world like i slept like i've never slept before but the problem was is when we had to wake up from that sleep you know and going back on the court so those four hours those four or five hours after that second sleep were the worst i mean i can't describe how difficult those four or five hours were but like jerry my friend the marathon runner had said the sun will come up and you know i'm not i suppose pre-covid i'm getting more into nature now but i wasn't like a huge nature person but like it is amazing when the sun actually came up on that day so we were we kind of came back and it was still dark and we were playing and when the sun came up the kind of energy, you know, that actually when we got to the 60 hours, when we got to the end, we were obviously physically, you know, incredibly tired and stuff, but it was almost like those hours after the sleep were worse, you know? So, so um, it's incredible. Like, it, it, you know, I, I, I don't know in terms of can relate it to business, but like, if you just kind of push that a little bit more, like it might be, you might be, going through that little bit of pain but on the other side it's just that little bit more and you're just you're almost there you know and you can almost you can you can touch it but you just got to keep going like um so yeah it, I've, I've heard uh the and, and we all often talk about when you're when you can't go any longer mm. when you just can't give any more mm. you take a deep breath and you dig in and you just give and then all of a sudden something happens mm. uh, and you get kind of a second wind. Mm. Um, tell us about uh, then you went through the second, the second night. So the first night you couldn't sleep. You wanted to sleep an hour. You couldn't sleep the second night. You did sleep an hour, but it was, it, it was almost as if your body was trying to make up for the time. And then you're like, wait a minute. I can't, I can't get it together. I'm too tired. I'm too tired. So yeah. what's going on in your head at this moment? Yeah, I think it's, it, it was, it was, it was a fight, um, you know, internally, mentally, it's a, it's a, it's a fight like, um, you know, that's, but, but I think there was an, and I think that's why it's so important that you have good people around you, because if you're on your own there, I think it's very difficult, but I think the fact that I just didn't want to, let the other guys down and they didn't want to let up you know we all didn't want to let each other down and then everyone was kind of supporting each other and um, and I guess like I had I do have a good strong mindset in that I you know I was like I'm not they can carry me off this tennis court like you know as in I'm gonna I'm not giving up. yeah and I, I think like I, I actually think college tennis and playing in Louisiana I think sometimes you, you know in college sports like and I think you know everyone has it where there's days where you don't feel you know there's days where you wake up where you're not excited about your job or whatever you're doing like but you know that you just have to you know you have to power through and you have to keep going right and I think yeah. I mean, that was kind of on steroids for that moment but like um you know I think it was amazing I mean it's amazing the, the, the people supporting us as well and, and how how much that helps and I think it's you know, if you're related to COVID now, it's tough uh, if you're on your own, right? It's tough to, you know, it's important that you're kind of for your own mental health and for your own well-being that you're actually speaking to someone or you're kind of, you know, you're engaged, get, engaging with people because it's not easy on your own. And I think if I look at the world record, I think that was probably the thing that stood out is, is people are so important. People are important and, and we weren't made to be alone. We were made mm. to cohabitate or to share experiences with others and I can tell you this morning we celebrated day 200 and I see Minas with us and uh, Maria from our our prayer room we've been getting together this morning was this 200th day mm -hmm. that we have got been together and uh, we kind of went back and we cried and laughed together this morning on Facebook live and mm -hmm. and I don't know how it would have been for me personally without the group and mm -hmm. without just this wonderful daily uh, group of people that are unconditional and uh, through some of the toughest times 
that we've had in our life. I mean, it's amazing. Now, let me, let's take everybody to a really happy time. Yeah, okay. And um, I remember being at Necker Island with you and taking video of you training Sir Richard Branson. Mm. And so Richard would be in at seven in the morning and you would play with Richard. And, yeah. and uh, so you've had the good fortune to get very close to Richard. And thank you so much for, for bringing me to Necker and, and having yeah. had those opportunities. Um, and we'll be back hopefully next year. Uh, I know if Trevor gets it together, we'll, we'll definitely yeah, be there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, let's talk about your experience with Richard Branson because mm. people want to know the man. Um, and, and let's talk about uh, how Richard is because I, I just found him to be such a kind, gentle man, gentle man. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and so what, what is it like for you to train uh, the icon of Sir Richard Branson. Yeah, then, like that. Your book. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I've been, you know, again, I, I think I've said it before in this, but I've been so lucky, like, to 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 have that to have that opportunity, and um, you know, I'm trying to think of uh, of things that people, you know, people can obviously read a lot in the press and 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 stories about him. But I'm trying to give kind of a, a little bit around the real person and. and just a genuinely very nice, very helpful person. And just to give an example, even, I mean, you know, obviously the airline Virgin and the brand and everything, you know, as a lot of businesses have been challenged, um, you know, Virgin has been challenged as well. But I, I just to give a, an example of the man, um, you know, he sent me an email early on in COVID saying, you know, how's your family? How's everyone doing? Look after yourself, take care of yourself. Um, you know, like a really genuine, re re just a really nice person. Um, so, so I would have nothing but positive things to say about him. Like the person, uh, he's incredibly fit. He's incredibly, he looks okay. after his, his physical well-being. He thinks he, he's, well, he's backed up by fact and, and science and so on, but he feels like he's more productive if he's physically active. Um, mm -hmm. So he plays tennis pretty much twice a day. That's his drug of choice. Kite surfs as well sometimes. Um, but uh, incredibly active, incredibly supportive and genuine person. Um, and very, very, uh, will put an arm around you and very kind of understanding of people, I think. Yeah. So I would say, if you ask me what his strength would be, I would say his strength is his, his people skills or his his ability to delegate, his ability to get the best out of people. Um, and, you know, I think that would be the strength for me that I would have picked up on. Um, yeah. And just I, someone, I, sorry, go on. I, I agree. I, I remember we were sitting by the beach and I don't, I don't remember where you were at that moment. And it, I, I may have told you this story. Mm. We're all sitting by the beach and there's all these, the long table, there's always the long table on Necker yeah, and then yeah. there's other tables and so forth. And, and Richard was sitting in the middle of the table kind of lengthwise and with a couple of people, he was talking to a couple of people. And I, I saw that, um, that there was someone uh, that wanted their spouse to come to the main Island and their spouse was in a different Island. And, and the, the circumstances are not important. What's important is I went and I just touched his, his shoulder. Now he's sitting down. We came down from the main house. And so everybody was already seated. And uh, I said, hey, Richard, just whispered in his ear. Hey, Richard, there's something. Um, uh, there's a decision that needs to be made um, uh, for someone who there's some injustice happening. And so I thought that you may want to be involved. Would you come with me for a moment? And he just looked at me and says, of course. He he excuses himself and come at, comes out. And so I told him what needed to happen. And so he immediately took me and handled it mm. immediately. And it was for someone that was also at the island. We needed to make a decision. I say we, it wasn't me, but mm. I just really wanted to, to champion this person. And so pretty soon, you know, things happened immediately. And by that afternoon, things had gotten resolved, but he didn't have to, he is the, the, the main person and he's hosting, all, there were, I think a hundred of us and, and, you know, the 50 of us, that was yeah, a smaller yeah. group, but, but it was an amazing journey when I saw that he just stood up and he made sure that things would happen. He introduced me to the right people. And then we went back and, mm -hmm. and thanked him for it, but that's how he is. 
uh, yeah. he will yeah. make you tea. Yeah, yeah. Did no, I, I, I. Go ahead. No, I was gonna. I was gonna say that I was trying to. I was trying to think of examples for people, you know, little stories, and that really sums up. That's a very good example of of him. I think is, is you know, because I've met a lot of very intellectual tech people, for example, and you can and you kind of with people, and you're like, oh my god, this person is a genius, and I'm a little bit, kind of you know, overawed by them in terms of what they're speaking about. Whereas with him, it's more his. It's more his just his. Yes. Just a nice guy like you know i think that you know in some ways i remember actually when he was in, he came to dublin and uh he was speaking at an event a couple of years ago and uh i played tennis with him when he came in and um he he invited me to the dinner that night and uh i so he had this crazy day and the dinner you know on necker it's obviously very very private um, yes. and and i've obviously spent time with him a lot of time on Necker and then I've I've been to London to him a few times as well and I've always kind of been in environments where you know there's there's it's not some kind of show like you know it's kind of it's I don't know how to describe it. they're smaller more intimate gatherings I would say whereas this one in Dublin was probably the first time I've been with him where it was just mass and people were you know he's this icon of business and people were trying to kind of get to him right and people would come up and they'd kind of try and pitch and do all this sort of stuff. But when he, when I was at dinner with him, um, a guy came over and he, he actually, um, he said to him, I'm sorry, like, would you, he wasn't rude to him, but he said, would you, would you, um, would you mind if I just have my dinner? You know, kind of something like that. Right. Cause everyone was coming after him. And then he made this speech at the dinner and then he went, he was kind of, he was going back to the airport actually. And then he kind of stopped. And he walked back up to the microphone and he said, there was someone that came over to me at dinner and asked for a picture. Um, and I'm sorry, I was a little bit, I was a little bit short with them. Where is that person? What they do? Let's do the picture before I leave. And then that person got up and came up and, it, and he said, like, it's like, cause he would, he would go to the airport and he'd think about that person. He'd feel bad about the, about that, you know? So like, yeah. oh, yeah. kind of, like his ability to kind of think, um, about people so so I've been very fortunate to 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 really obviously spend a significant amount of time with him and you know it gives me great pleasure that I got to introduce you to him and stuff you know so that 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 makes me happy so um oh, thank you no it's it's been it's been quite the journey and we've 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 been together in several locations with amazing people and uh what I find James is I love just showing up you know me, I just show up and it's me and, you know, there's nothing. It's just us. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that, those are the kinds of friends that you and I have. And those are the kinds of people that we surround ourselves with mm -hmm. um, is uh, are, are people who are just very um, natural. I mean, some of the friends from Ireland, mm -hmm. um, some of the guys from, uh, from mm -hmm. Australia, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, from all over, they're just, so mm -hmm. down to earth and life is too short right mm -hmm. life uh, is for too us short. To... I, I, I think you, you just what you're saying there I think one one thing I think is so important is authenticity like you yeah. know I think if you ask me if you ask me if you ask me honestly like in some ways how I've built a very good relationship with him I'd say one of the reasons is because I'm authentic with him I'm not I'm myself and like when he says to me how's things going I'll say not great like you know I'm not trying to put a front of that everything is amazing and I think I think like forgetting about him for a second I think authenticity is just really important and yeah. I think that's you know you can tell um you know and how we met Betty and uh how you kind of supported me and everything and yeah, I think it's just, it shines through in, in, in you, like, you know, so, so, um, and I think it's just an important quality, like. It is, it is. Can I tell the story of Ali Matt, is that? Uh, uh, you can, let's take no more than five minutes because I really want to spend time on your book. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. so you can tell the story about how we met, but let's just only spend five minutes on it. So we're in Los, let me just set it up and then you can take it, take it away. So we're in Los Angeles okay. and there's a group of people who are high influencers in LA. It's the end of the day. Um, and it was a full day that were a hundred people there. And the whole purpose was to help each other grow. That's mm. it. 
just to support one another. There were different exercises. And so here's the end of the night. And there's James, you are six foot seven. Yes, six, 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 six. Six. okay, well, I just gave you one more inch. <laughs> so you're six foot six and I am five foot three. So imagine, here I go. <laughs> and and uh, so take it away, how did we meet? <laughs> so, so just to give context, I was only there because someone I knew who I'd met previously on Necker actually was, Chris. had a fair ticket and invited me and I kind of went, but at the time didn't, didn't really feel comfortable at that event. Like I wasn't sure if I should even be there, but I said, I'm going to it anyway. And, uh, and so you came over to me and I was almost, I think I was about to leave and you said, kind of, you know, so who, not who, like, not who are you, but like, what, what do you do? Um, and I said, well, I've just finished playing professional tennis and I'm not really sure what I want to do, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about getting into some speaking stuff and I haven't really done, done much of it, but I'm looking at, you know, kind of, I was kind of bluffing a little bit in some ways, you know, and then, and then you turn around and go, well, how would you like to, how would you like to speak to my, uh, to cal- my organization, my team tomorrow? It's a hundred people or something. Was there? It's a hundred. Yeah. Oh my gosh, everybody. He had deer in the headlights, like. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like, oh right. my gosh, am I really going to do this? <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I thought, I thought, um, I was like, oh, I might have to go back to San Francisco tomorrow. And, and then you, you were very kind of, come on, just do it. Like, and you kind of, you didn't, you, you didn't kind of sugarcoat. It. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And I met you the next morning, I think it's seven in the morning. Very early. I said, just show up early. We'll just do it like an Oprah thing. Don't worry about it. Show up early. I'll coach you and then you'll do it. Don't worry. Yeah. This, is, this will be wonderful for you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I showed up early in the morning. You, you, I did it anyway, and it was, it was great. And then I remember and you, you got a standing ovation. You won't tell people this, but I will tell them. Everybody, he got a standing ovation. We did a selfie. I'll show you all of that stuff. I'll post it on Facebook. But oh my gosh! And then I took, I had some of my people take pictures from the back while you mm. were speaking. Mm. And then at the end of the night, do you remember what I said to you when you were, you were, you had to go to the airport because you were. Yeah, you yeah, no, I was. It was. I was going in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, you said to me at the end, you came over and you said, uh, congratulations, you're now a keynote speaker for, for California Bank. And you know, it's funny, it, just to finish, to finish off on that, it, like to almost pay it forward. I'm doing a program with a, with a big tech company in Dublin and uh, I brought a, a speaker who's kind of starting out, who's a clinical psychologist and she was speaking on anxiety and she wants to speak to kind of corporates and stuff. And I, I gave her, I, I said, okay, co- come and speak to this company. I'll line it up for you. I'll ask them if it's okay. And I said to her at the end, I used your line. I said, congratulations, you're now a speaker for oh. you know, a major tech company. So, so if there's a way to make sure. That's the whole idea. It's like, we just give yeah. it away. So, okay. So I want to do a little bit of propaganda for you because you are so good. Um, so, James, you and I, I, I brought you in and we've done some tennis clinics for executives here mm-hmm. in Los Angeles. We've also uh, done some chats where you've just really engaged people and you're so engaging. Um, everybody, you can just see he's engaging, he's charming, he's brilliant. He's got the IQ and the EQ going and he's got a lot of experience. And so, uh, so we, uh, we did some round tables in mm-hmm. downtown LA at the city club. And mm-hmm. that was amazing. People didn't even want to leave. And, and, yeah. and that was great. And it, it, it's all about leadership. Now, what, give us the company. So Uber, you've been, you've been coaching people at Uber. What other yeah, companies? Air, Airbnb. Airbnb. That's right. Yeah. Airbnb. Yeah. yeah. And, so uh, yes, yeah, so I, I was, you know, I'm doing a lot of one-to-one coaching stuff with people really around performance and usually tech and financial services a lot in Ireland and doing a lot of offsites for companies as well. And, you know, commercial team looking to, to hit their target and, uh, you know, working with them, designing offsites and so on. And then a lot of speaking stuff as well. So going in, giving, giving keynote, keynote presentations. And um, so, yeah, so I've been, I've been lucky to, Kind of build a business over the last few years and uh, I love like when I played professionally I loved reading a lot of you know business books a lot of um, performance books so I just kind of love helping people kind of you know set their goals and go about achieving their goals um, yeah. so, uh, and so and then the book very much the book that I've written is 
I suppose the lessons that I've learned from the people along the way. And so my own lessons, obviously my own lessons in terms of my goals and, and, you know, goals that I achieved and goals that I failed upon uh, or, or didn't succeed on. Um, but then also the little nuggets, you know, the lessons that I would have learned from Richard or, you know, I tell the story about you meeting you as well in, 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 in California and so on. So like those people that I've met along the way that have been fortunate that have, that have um, encouraged me and, and, um, and I've learned, like, I, I love the quote, said success leaves clues. And, and uh, I think you can learn from, from, from people and, and, you know, it's, it's like uh, on that, on that point, I also think, you also have to be true to who you are and what your values are. You know, I think it's, you know, I think there's an element sometimes where people try and be people they're not, you know? So an entrepreneur actually said to me a couple of years ago that an Irish entrepreneur said, you know, everyone at a time tried to be Steve Jobs, for example, right? They wanted to be like him, but you have to be your own person, but it's your, but you can, you know, I can take the lessons that I learned from you and I can, you know, you know learn from it and use them but use it with my own who I am and so I think that's important so I I I mean I think hopefully people can see and from from watching this or listening to this like I love people I love speaking to people and uh, I love kind of helping people get the best out of themselves let's um let's go straight to your book now so um uh, the name of the book is do you happen to have a copy right i i i I can run and get it but i won't get up but it's yeah isolation so what i will do everybody is all posted but but i do have uh the the chapters so uh if you think about uh in your life and in your business you're gonna need some uh to plan right to have a plan And then really looking at the plan objectively. And then how do you achieve your goals? You set up your goals and then you achieve them. And then, and then how do you develop confidence and um, building your support network? You know, we talked about who it's so important to have the people around you. Mm -hmm. Uh, You talked about authenticity and that's in your, that's in your book. And then, um, making your own agenda and not somebody else's being yourself and being authentic and not being somebody else. And then also I would add um, allowing others to be themselves, allowing others to have the freedom to lead in the way that they lead. Mm -hmm. They can't lead the way you want them to lead. They should be able to be themselves. I remember calling uh, my team, my previous team to let them know that I had taken another position um, in in a different company And the one thing, the common theme was, thank you. You allowed me to be myself. You allowed Mm -hmm. me, you encouraged me to just kind of have my own voice. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, how do you work with people? So tell us about the book. How did you organize it? And, Mm -hmm. um, and if I were to start reading your book today, or if anyone here were to start reading your book, tell us the name of it, where we can find it. And then Mm -hmm. what can people get out of it? Well, we'll get Mm -hmm. the people get out of it. So, so, so the book is called Advantage. Um, it's on Amazon and it's also available on my website, which is www.hccollective.co. Um, so not .com, not .co.uk, but just .co. Um, I suppose the tagline in the book is Lessons from Sport and Business to Achieve Your Goals. And um, so the book is very much focused around my journey as a, you know, as a tennis player, that the, the, the it's, it's not kind of chronological, but it's more like my journey as, you know, as I, as I set about achieving my ranking goals um, and how I, how I formulated that plan and how I went about achieving those goals. Um, and then also how some of the goals, how I missed, missed out on those and how I kind of, I suppose, you know, when I missed a goal, how I kind of got myself ready to go again. Um, and then also it's around, it's around, really around the people that I've met along the way and the kind of nuggets of information that I've taken from them. So if you look at Richard, for example, I would always keep a journal when I'm, you know, when I'm with him and, and I would try and pick up the little lessons that I would learn. So there's, there's lessons in there. There's lessons from the entrepreneurs and business people that I've met that I've been fortunate enough to, 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 uh, to meet. Um, so that would, that would be, you know, that would be the way the book is kind of broken down. It's, a, it's a quite an easy read as in it's a, it's not, uh, I think, 
you know, I think people, I mean, I'm biased, obviously, but I think people will enjoy reading it as in it's, it's, it's a light read. Um, and my goal really is that, you know, and I, I think, I believe this, that if you read the book, you'll take one or two key things that you can kind of implement in your, in your personal or your professional life. Um, I think at the moment, I think it's interesting around the planning piece um, just in terms of COVID because, you know, we all know at the moment it's quite hard to set really long-term goals because, you know, things things can change. Um, so I think it's an interesting... Oh, there, sorry, I thought I lost you for a second there. No, you didn't. I'm just showing everybody what the book looks like. And this is something that you showed me a while ago and I just wanted to keep it. Um, oh, there so that so that everybody can see this is pretty much um, the book uh, if you could just kind of see it this is what it looks like and there's a there's a picture of of you with Sir Richard Branson on the tennis court and there's a picture mm -hmm. of you with with uh, Richard and so forth that's it I just wanted to show people this, oh, thank you. Yeah. And this is yeah. the, name, the the way the book looks so when you go order it um, you now know how to order it. So anyway. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, the, pro the process was 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 fun and like, I don't know, was it fun writing it? it was, I mean, it was like, I mean, it was, you know, it's one of those ones where I wanted to, there's an element where even if no one, even if I'm the only person in the world that reads it, it's like, it's for me, you know, to capture, you know, memories that that obviously over time will become more distant, right? So, so um, yes. but we're all, but we're all making new memories as well. But um, so it's, I definitely enjoy doing it and I would encourage I encourage people to write their own books as well you know why, why not um, and I, I again I, I know this is I've said it a couple of times but I've been so lucky in terms of the what tennis has given me and the people that I've met along the way um, and where my where my tennis racket has really brought me and and who it's who it's brought me into the conversation with as well you know um, and I think go on sorry Betty no, uh, and I think you have been able to touch lives at a personal level and at a professional level through mm. your sports because you very naturally are able to get people who want to up their game, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> in their life and in their professional life and you take an assessment, I've seen you do this, um, and you, you've got a process that you take people through to create a much better life. And now with COVID, you can actually do this for just about anybody because, um, you know, we're all on social media and on Zoom, you can just actually access anybody. I mean, they don't have to wait for you to, to, to come to America to meet you. I mean, so how do people get a hold of you if, if anybody wanted to just... Have a, would you be open to just having an exploratory conversation with someone if somebody said, oh my gosh, I want to talk to you. I want, my, I want to up my game. How do I up my game? Uh, would you be open yeah, to no, I, Yeah, of course. Yeah, delighted to. So, so you know, probably um, my email, I'll give you my email, j.kluski. So j.kluskey at hccollective.co. Okay, so when you say heyccollective.co. Yeah, HC. So H for Harry, C for Charlie. Okay, HC. Yeah, collective, C-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-V-E dot co. So that's one way. Or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, or follow me on Instagram. Uh, they're probably the, the, the three. Um, but yeah, delighted for someone to to someone to get in touch with me um yeah like i i think you've summed up well i mean i love kind of trying to help people just in whatever way i can you know i actually i think you you i don't want to, i again i don't want to tell the story as like a you know a, um kind of shoot my own horn or whatever but i think you'll like this betty because i think it's aligned with who you are but i'm sitting here and i'm looking over my computer and I'm looking at a hamper right and because and, and sorry a hamper in in like a, a gift basket or food basket mm -hmm. and um I was in London last year um in December and I was traveling to the airport and this this lady uh she almost missed the train and her the the the, the, the carriage was the door was about to shut and I kind of she just made it onto the train anyway and I said to her I started talking to her. I said, Oh, you know, you just made it, whatever. And we were chatting away anyway. Um, and it turned out, she said, Oh, I'm working. I worked in London for years. I've moved back to Dublin, working in a job that I don't really like. 
not that happy. And I said, so what industry are you working in? And she said, I'm in the retail kind of, you know, uh, customer experience, very senior position. And, I, and she said she wasn't happy. And I said, you know, uh, you, I know someone who works in a different, he, he's got a startup and maybe he's looking for someone. And so she gave me, long story short, she gave me her number anyway. I connected the two of them and I said, oh, you should, you should meet her. And to, to my friend, he met her. She ended up working for him for a year. And she oh, wow. sent me a message. She sent me a message at the time saying, actually working for him, thank you so much. Um, and then, I mean, I, I, I didn't expect anything from it. Like it wasn't, I wasn't doing it for any kind of gain or anything. Right. And, and then out of nowhere this week, she sent me a message and she said, um, what's your address? And I said, she said, she's just finished up on the project with him. It went amazing and she, it was great. And, and she sent me a huge food hamper basically as, and a thank you card, you know? And I thought, well, that's really oh, nice. Goodness. So uh, I just, I, I think that, that, yeah, that kind of, and I think you're, you're very similar to in, in that way. I think you meet someone and you think, what can I do to help that person, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I want to share something. I want to leave all of you uh, with something that, um, let me see if I can do this. I'm going to try to share my screen one more time. And I'm going to share. James, I'm going to bring you to memory lane. Everybody take a look at this video. <laughs> This is James coaching is Sir Richard Branson. I took that. Remember oh, that when I took that that yeah, morning? It was in the Bahamas, actually, isn't it? That was uh, oh yeah, that was that's right. That wasn't in his island. That was at the Bahamas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at that. That's it. So, yep. So he's telling him exactly how to hold a racket and all of that. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I gave I gave you this. I gave Betty the secret. I gave you when I said you got to come down early to play tennis. That's you're, right. You're, yeah. You're, so James called me. You called me and you said, uh, "I want you to come down. Come down really quickly because uh, 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 he's supposed to be here any minute. Richard is supposed to be here any minute." So <laughs> yeah, I'm like, "Oh up. my gosh! Right now, right now!" And it was early in the morning because Richard goes down at 7 a.m. and you were playing with him. Was it? Yeah, 7 a.m. And yeah, so yeah. every day, just about Richard would play, and I got to meet him and uh, spend some time with him. And then uh, I would hop on the on the court, and then you would teach me. So, yeah. so thank you for all the lessons. No, 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 no thank you. <laughs> I tell people I, I I'm not that good at the game, but I love it. I mean, I guess when I play, I'm I'm okay. But anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, James. Uh, thank you for your friendship. And thank you for being just a beacon of light in this world. You know, you've, you've okay. been such a wonderful, gentle man. Um, and I mean that in every sense of the word. And uh, you're a gentleman at heart. Um, you're a gentle soul. You're brilliant on the EQ as well as the IQ. You're a fantastic coach. I have seen you speaking. I have experienced you and you and I have done this together. Mm -hmm. And uh, people just really get so much out of you. And I think it's because of your experience, both in business and sports, and you're able to, mm -hmm. to merge them so easily together. So um, I cannot wait to host you in California again. Um, and um, and have you out here to make an impact uh, for, for, for I love that view person. behind you. I'm like, oh God, I'd love to be out there. I know, I know. You gotta come. You gotta come. We're so yeah. blasted. There's, no, there's no fake screen for you, buddy. No, no fake screen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, uh, you are finalizing your isolation now. You've tested in your yeah, so, you're yeah. Fine. Thankfully, uh, th and thanks for the thanks for the prayers. Um, I took the test a couple of days ago, so yeah, negative on the test. But I'm I'm self isolating until tomorrow evening. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean it's it's a really challenging time for for everyone. I mean you know it's it's Ireland is Europe is kind of really going through the second wave now, um, and Ireland's cases have kind of rocketed in recent weeks and months. And I think there's a little bit you know like everywhere there's a bit of tiredness there with people, but I think you know everyone has to stick together and we have to social distance and wear masks and get get through it you know 
to wash so, our hands and, and wash take care of one another and, and show show to each other how much we really care but we got to show it with action so so the notes that i've taken from our conversation this morning is um you know with a, with a guinness book of world records mm -hmm. why not right yeah, you can yeah. either do it or you can have regrets and then just mm -hmm. when when you can't give any more you can find it in your strength you can find it in yourself to just go and do it again mm. uh, the sun will come up on sunday so that's the same good. thing right so mm. have something that's going to anchor you in the future that mm. you know that when that sun is going to come up that you are going to be there victorious and you have to just really imagine yourself there there's so much more and i know that you wrote it in your book you want to get this book because um james the stories that he tells uh, uh i mean you could just see he's such a wonderful storyteller okay. have good people around you and that's a big one we don't do this alone and you've heard me say this uh an infinite amount of times success leaves clues mm. Um, and I love that. I, you know, we've talked so many times and I, I don't remember that one, but that I really love that success does leave clues and, mm -hmm. and we can learn from other people. We can learn yeah. from one another uh, and be true to who you are. Mm -hmm. Just be yourself, be authentic. So if you want to get a hold of James, J Klusky, C so J, J dot Klusky, J dot Klusky, C L U S K E Y at yeah hccollective.co yeah. that is your website and then um also uh you are on linkedin and that's LinkedIn. how you and i you and i connect on linkedin quite a bit yeah i'd be very active on linkedin and then if people also on instagram jay jay.kluski on instagram um or james kluski on linkedin so okay well, thank you, James, and congratulations on your success of your book and on your oh, coaching you. and speaking success. And I look forward to um, to having you back oh, uh, in you. person next time. <laughs> Hopefully, we get through this COVID and, and we're we able will, to get you will. out to uh, beautiful, sunny California. I'll probably never leave. <laughs> <laughs> We would love that. We would love that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, James. And thanks, Thank everybody, you. for joining. If you have any questions, please put your comments on, um, on this YouTube, and we'll ask James to go back to the YouTube and answer your comments directly. Mm -hmm. So if you want to give James a note directly on this YouTube, go ahead, and we will do that. And so, um, so with that, we will go ahead and close it up. Thank you so much for tuning in. Give us a lot of likes. So I understand that the way to show your gratitude on YouTube, and I'm fairly new to this, is, is to give us likes and to share it with everybody. This is one of the videos you want to share with as many people as you can. During the COVID times, it's a good time for us to really reevaluate where we are and to get somebody like James to, to really walk us through. There's so many nuggets, James, that you just gave us. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for being with us.